Celebrated composer, playwright, and orchestrator Dave Malloy is nominated for three 2017 Tony Awards for his hit musical, Natasha Pierre and the Great Comet of 1812, which also happens to be the most Tony-nominated show of the season. We recently headed to Malloy's personal studio space in Brooklyn to chat with the creator about crafting the majestic musical. The musical palette for the show is very, very wide-ranging uh, because War and Peace is very, very wide-ranging. So Tolstoy is talking about the characters, you know, from the Tsar and Napoleon all the way down to Balaga, the Troika drivers, and, and everyone in between. <coughs> so in dealing with all these different characters, I kind of had different styles of music to kind of represent who the different characters are to, to some extent. So like Pierre's music, you know, Pierre is going through this epic existential life crisis. So I was just thinking of a lot of like indie rock and kind of emo rock bands. Um, so Arcade Fire was actually a huge impulse for Pierre and like the opening chords of Pierre. There's something about like those like giant chords that has this very epic quality that like you know, he's dealing with these epic gigantic uh, problems, these existential light, light life problems. Um, so yeah, so Arcade Fire was a huge impulse for that. Malloy's electropop opera is based on a 70 page section of Leo Tolstoy's War and Peace and incorporates several of the grand and more quiet moments that come along with adapting such an epic tale, a challenge Malloy enthusiastically embraced. What I really love about this, I mean, what I love about War and Peace, um, and what I love about, you know, I think this show tries to capture, is it really is this kind of uh, all-encompassing portrait of what life can be. So there is this incredible spectacle and joyful celebration of life. There's these, you know, giant epic dance sections where people are toasting audience members and the audience is shaking along with the egg, egg shakers and uh, it's this real celebration of life. But at the same time, there's also these scenes that really then zone in onto the very, these very internal psychological moments. So it's just Pierre at the piano singing about his depression. It's just Natasha singing about her love to the moon. During the process of composing the show that's now playing at the revamped Imperial Theater, transformed to resemble an intimate supper club that allows the cast to roam the entire theater, Malloy realized his Natasha, played by Tony nominee Danae Benton, needed a memorable song that would cast a spell over audiences. Oh, actually, this is one thing I want to talk about. <clears throat> no One Else was a song that was written uh, when we first transferred off Broadway. So this wasn't in the Ars Nova version of the show. It was when we transferred to Casino. <clears throat> and it was just because it became clear that Natasha needed a way better song. But Natasha needed, like, you know, a show-stopping act one aria. Um, but these chords, I struggled with the song for a while. And then I found that these chords were actually hiding in the show. So at the end of the song, Letters, Natasha sings this little thing that's just like, Yes, yes, I love him. How else could I have his letter in my hand? And it's just like this tiny little throwaway thing at the end of that song, Letter. But then I realized that those chords were kind of lovely. Because then it goes to this augmented chord. So that those chords then became the chorus of No One Else. <laughs> 